What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. It's the show about the era of perpetually accelerating disruption, this tech crazy world that we live in right now, the era of HyperChange. I'm your host, Gally. We're on Spotify, we're on YouTube, we're on X. And today I want to break down NVIDIA, the craziest company that is in the stock market right now. I mean, NVIDIA went from selling GPUs for gaming to all of a sudden becoming the backbone of this AI revolution. And really, they're the only company making money on this wave of AI, which is so fascinating. We've seen OpenAI be worth 300 billion with like 10 billion in revenue, losing tens of billions of dollars. Then you look at a company like X or Grok that is worth 120 billion after combining with X and XAI, also losing billions of dollars. They just put out a report, Bloomberg, that said they were losing a billion a month and their revenues, I don't know, a couple billion. So you have these companies that are making a couple billion, losing billions, worth hundreds of billions, and then you've got NVIDIA that is just soaking up all of the profits in this industry. I mean, NVIDIA, right now, they're worth three and a half trillion dollars. In the past four quarters alone, they've done over $80 billion in profit, literally just profit. And so it's interesting to see how the consumer brands in this space, OpenAI, Grok, are getting all the hype and a lot of buzz, but really all, but their business models are horrible compared to NVIDIA's, at least for now. And the market is betting OpenAI and Grok will own those consumer relationships, will evolve, will become much more bigger and profitable companies, which I think probably will happen. But for now, the amount of money that NVIDIA is making, just over $100 billion in just a little over the past year. They made $100 billion off AI. No one else is making close to that kind of money in this wave of AI. Now, you could say Google's an AI company or Meta or Amazon or Microsoft with the cloud, but when you're really talking about these large language models, the what is really defining this new era and wave of AI that I think we're in that's very early that's something like it's going to change the internet i mean this whole idea that we have to go search and find information and and you know google it and search it on the internet versus this super clean ai interface that you know surmises all of this information and brings it back to us we're in a different era right now and and nvidia is single-handedly powering that era so i think it's a fascinating sort of thing to analyze in the value chain of ai so NVIDIA makes these chips. Actually, they don't even make the chips. They design these chips that are made by TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor, one of the world's most interesting strategically valuable companies, which is worth like a trillion dollars. But what's funny is Taiwan Semiconductor is only worth a trillion. NVIDIA is worth three and a half trillion. And, but even though Taiwan's building all their, Taiwan Semiconductor is building all their chips. But so I, I want to dive into the NVIDIA financials before we get too carried away on anything else, because this is what is insane to me. This chart of their revenue, their income statement, revenue, gross profit, and operating income, you can see this explosion. I have never seen anything of this scale ever, especially when you talk about the size of the numbers that we're looking at. I mean, it looks tiny that NVIDIA was doing just eight or seven billion in revenue three years ago, but that was a ton of revenue. That was tens of billions per year. Now they're doing over 100 billion per year run rate. They did 44.1 billion last quarter, growing 70% year over year. And 21 billion of that went straight to profit. That was a little bit decrease in their profit margin. As you can see, their operating income went down, but the point is still standing. They are making 20 plus billion per quarter while all these other AI companies are losing money. So I'm just kind of, I I don't really have an opinion on NVIDIA because unlike Apple with the iPhone, where it's like, I have, I guess I'm recording this on my phone, but here's my case, my iPhone where I own it, or my Tesla, where I own it, I really understand these businesses, these consumer brands, you know, ChatGPT, Grok, we're using it. With NVIDIA, I have no idea what's going on. I mean, it's just, they sell the magical chip. They have this new chip, Blackwell, that's even better. They're always coming out with a better chip and everyone's buying their chips to run their AI. So now there's all these questions of, you know, will that continue or not? And what I think is so fascinating about the market is NVIDIA at 3.5 trillion, one of the world's largest companies, with this meteoric rise in share price, if you look at the actual stock of NVIDIA, it's been insane. In the past five years, it's up 1,500%. So NVIDIA stock has been booming and coming into its own on its own right, but it's actually not that expensive. That's what's so interesting to me. In their you know, $3.5 trillion for a company that just did $81.5 billion, almost $100 billion in earnings run rate, they're trading at a 35 to 40 times earning ratio. So the market is, and remember, revenue is still growing at 70%. So I think it's such a fascinating case study to follow because A, 
all the profits in this new wave of AI are getting sucked up by NVIDIA. And then the market is actually, I would say slightly bearish on this continuing, um, which is so interesting because if you look at NVIDIA's fundamentals, you know, you, people are comparing AI to the dot-com bubble or all these other crazy bubbles and all this stuff, but those didn't have earnings. NVIDIA actually has earnings to back up its market cap and it's not crazily priced at all. Like Tesla is way higher of an earnings multiple than NVIDIA. So many companies are. And that's because A, chip companies, I think, can go into Vogue, be cool, and then go out of Vogue quickly, historically in the market. So maybe the market's a little spooked by, is there going to be a better chip? Or maybe NVIDIA isn't actually that in strong of a strategic position because ChatGPT and Grok own the consumer brands, TSMC's making it, they're just a middleman, we shouldn't be putting that much of a premium on their earnings. But I, I don't know, looking at the financial statements, 50% or more of your revenue flowing into cash flow I mean, this is one of the best business w businesses, one of, this is one of the fastest growing, most profitable, largest businesses we've ever seen. And so, and, and I think it is interesting to point, there's been these kind of waves, like in 2017 and 2018 revenue went up and then went down for a year before coming back. And then it went down in like 22, 23 before this insane meteoric rise. So there's been waves of NVIDIA's earnings, but they also have made a profit every single quarter since 2015 and have like steadily compounded their revenue from a billion a quarter 10 years ago to 44 billion. So this kind of earnings compounding snowball of NVIDIA, maybe it's not a straight line up and it's got these cycles and maybe we're at the top of a cycle, but I don't know. I, I mean, and it's such a paradoxical question because it's like, do AIs continue scaling the way that they always have? Like, or the way that they have been now. Like is OpenAI gonna continue needing to buy as many NVIDIA chips? And this is like the debate that everyone's talking about. Or, you know, is everyone bought too many NVIDIA chips and consumers aren't paying enough for AI? There's not enough real world adoption and people are gonna stop buying NVIDIA chips. And even if they buy a lot, there won't be growth for NVIDIA because this was a surge. Or will these companies like Grok and ChatGPT literally continue building these massive data centers and needing billions and billions more of chips? Like we're in this, and th this is just why I, so I don't even have a position in NVIDIA stock because, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm tempted to, but I, I mean, I, first of all, you have an owner, operator, founder. That's one of the things I look at for these game-changing companies. Jensen Huang, her Wong, he's insane. He's been operating this company at an insanely high level. He's got one of the coolest, most badass jackets in the tech industry. <laughs> um, he owns about three, four percent of NVIDIA worth about 13 or 14 billion dollars. He started the company, he's running it, he looks young, he's hungry, he's been leading this cutting edge of AI, um, talking about the future. So I feel like A, you have him, the leadership of this company is world-class and is continuing to push forth the vision, continuing to push forth innovation, um, a lot of very interesting things. And the other thing is, the flip side of it is like, NVIDIA is so disruptive, their products are so good, but it's like, how can they even make more money? They're already making 100 billion a year to make another 100 billion a year, that's like all of Apple's profit. It's like, where do you, who's paying that much money? You can't, the world's only so big. So NVIDIA's already working with their customers and partners to say, this is our product roadmap. Here's what we're gonna launch. This is all the water, electricity, and real estate you're gonna need to be able to fit all these GPUs that you're gonna buy years in advance. So in some ways, once people get locked into the NVIDIA system and their AI is working on it, I mean, how big of a moat is that? I mean, how hard is it to d disrupt that? Um, you know, OpenAI and Grok appear to be all in on building on NVIDIA, and that seems like the way these LLMs are working, they're getting better. And I don't know this, the business well enough to know how locked in they really are, but I mean, they're seeming locked in for now. <laughs> I gotta say, I use ChatGPT and Grok constantly like they have become such a big part of my life even talking about this video research cooking anything researching anything just talking about stuff like it really has changed the way i live a little bit this ai revolution and i think it's just getting started like it's a real real change in how we interact from the internet and back to what i said earlier about like instead of like going and searching for information we get it pushed to us via these ais it's a totally different way to interact with the internet that i think is a lot more efficient and so I think we're scratching the surface on that. And, you know, all the, the secondary push of this software AI super voice that follows you around is kind of one first layer. And I think the next layer we're waiting through, waiting for in AI is a breakthrough of the form factor. Is it OpenAI's hardware product with Johnny Ive? Is it Tesla's Optimus robot? 
you know, how does AI kind of embody itself in the physical world and that make it even more useful, even more easy to interact with? And so, you know, and will NVIDIA be relevant in that world? And so there's, and, and it's also worth noting that NVIDIA makes the chips for Tesla self-driving cars as well. So it's not just these LLM AIs, but the LLM AIs are the biggest part of their business. It's been driving all their growth. So if you even look at their revenue trend slide, you can see like gaming, which is what they started at, is growing really well. Professional visualization growing well, autos growing super well, others growing well, but it's all dwarfed by data center revenue. 39 billion out of the 44 billion is data center. The next biggest is gaming at 3.7. Auto is only half a billion a quarter, even though it's doubling, more than doubling year over year. So NVIDIA has its hands in a lot of strategic things, but in many ways, I don't want to say its business is a one trick pony, but it seems like its earnings rise has been solely due to the rise of LLMs. And that's a double edged sword because you could say, oh, that's risky. Like they only have one kind of customer. They're sort of a unicorn. Or are they literally like riding the biggest change and disruption in human history for the next 50 years, the creation of the AI super assistant, and that's their earnings growth. And they're going to keep riding this product wave into hundreds, 500 billion in profits, you know? And it's, it's tough because I'm trying to, stop myself from making too many predictions here because I don't, I like to, you know, you got to know what you don't know. That's what Warren Buffett said. So I know that I don't understand NVIDIA. I don't understand why they have the best chip. I don't really understand how the AIs are running on their chips and why someone can't just build a better chip that's cheaper that we someone pays them for. So that's the biggest risk for NVIDIA. If you're holding the stock, how do you know when, you know, if I was Sam Altman or running one of these companies like Elon, and I actually was buying all the NVIDIA GPUs. And then all of a sudden I was like, ooh, this new startup is building other GPUs. I'm gonna start buying them from them. Like that would be a signal that NVIDIA is fading in relevancy, which I know is kind of a bad analogy, but it's one of my philosophies of like, be the customer. If you're not the customer of a company, it's gonna be really hard for you to understand and actually get an edge on the financial markets. And so that's why I haven't touched NVIDIA personally, but I mean, everything I'm thinking points to ChatGPT is here to stay. They're getting way bigger. Interesting comments by Ilya, who was one of the ChatGPT founders that got kicked out, was like, if we let AI run rogue, they're just gonna build data centers and solar panels everywhere. And that's what AI wants to do, to optimize itself and get bigger. So, and I thought that was an interesting sneak peek to like, AI could get so much bigger than what it is today. Like. We just think these NVIDIA numbers are big because it's $100 billion in earnings, like blah, blah, blah. Just because it's big and has grown a lot doesn't mean it won't continue. Like when I think about the ways in which we use AI and how that's growing and the capabilities of AI, um, you know, how much more compute will it need? I don't know, but it feels like NVIDIA's earnings could continue booming. And it won't be in a straight line necessarily, but could NVIDIA continue to race up to 200 billion earnings run rate quickly? Like, yeah. And so that's why I think this 3.5 trillion market cap is so interesting because despite this run in stock price, um, despite its valuation, it actually looks very fairly valued. I mean, 35 to 40 times earnings for a company growing revenue at 70%. And if you look at their trailing 12 month operating income growth, they're at 81.5 billion in the past four quarters of profit up from 33 billion in the past four quarters before that. So they are more than doubling, closer to tripling year-over-year -year profit growth on an annualized basis than doubling. So let's say they even double profits again, 160 billion. Well, now I think you're easily worth 5 trillion. So I don't know. NVIDIA is, is such a fascinating company. They've been buying a little bit back of stock. They've been returning money to shareholders. Every single quarter, they announce these blockbuster earnings that are just so much profit. Exactly the opposite of OpenAI and Grok. So I'm kind of curious, and this is where I open it up to y'all, you know, what is the future of NVIDIA? Will they be able to retain their dominance? Will they be able to keep growing earnings? Are the earnings gonna plateau or decline here at 100 billion? Are you long the stock? Um, you know, will OpenAI and Grok be able to turn around their business models? I should make a new video about them, but uh, you know, I think we're, we're witnessing one of the fast, most fa best, we're, we're witnessing one of the best case studies in finance right now with NVIDIA. And the one thing is for sure, nobody's making money on this new wave of AI except for NVIDIA right now. They are the only, and they are swimming in cash. So something about their product, something about their ecosystem, something about what they're doing is so valuable that they're making all the money. Everyone's paying them billions of dollars and 
I don't know. It's it's pretty insane to watch. I mean, I it's 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 also like this weird kind of esoteric thing because we knew AI was going to be big. You know, tech's going to be big, but you won't think of like, oh, the next biggest company in the world is going to be like a chip company. Like, I guess I didn't see that coming. I should have. When I say it, it's like obviously chips powering AI, they would be huge. But it's like, you know, we think, oh, what's the next biggest company? It's going to be a humanoid robot company. It's going to be a, a Neuralink. It's going to be like a brand or something we understand, not like a chip that's sitting in a data center that we never see or touch or ever look at in real life. You know, I, how many of you have ever seen an NVIDIA chip in real life or touched an NVIDIA chip in real life? Probably like almost no one. But yet that's become the most viable piece of technology in the AI revolution. So kind of interesting. Anyway, this is HyperChange rambling on NVIDIA. Let me know what you think in the comments below. See y'all next time.